In early spring of 1986 in Russia, 20-year-old Evgenia Nazarova came to a military town in the village of Kamenka to visit her husband, a soldier. Access to the town was only possible through a checkpoint, where the girl went. There, Eugenia was informed that her husband was in the infirmary due to deteriorating health, and therefore would not be able to come out to her on his own. The unforeseen problem was instantly resolved by a kind young man, one of the privates, who volunteered to escort the guest to her destination. The guy took the initiative when the attendant had gone somewhere for a few minutes. Rejoicing at the imminent meeting with her husband, Nazarova trustingly followed her companion. The road led through a small forest, and soon both were surrounded by trees. Suddenly the soldier seized the girl and said imperiously, Take off your clothes, or I'll kill you. The frightened victim hurriedly complied with the private's vile order. She was obviously scared by the prospect of becoming another victim of the forest. After getting his way, he not only abused the girl but also carried out a blood-chilling threat. Grabbing her by the hair, the murderer plunged Eugenia's head into the forest stream and kept her there until the girl stopped struggling for the opportunity to take at least one healthy breath. The criminal laid the corpse on the ground, camouflaged it with a pile of dry twigs and stones, and for some reason removed the wedding ring from the lifeless finger of the murdered woman. It is quite obvious that Nazarov, being a patient in the infirmary, did not meet his young wife that day and lost all hope for the next few days. Attempts to find the missing girl by the criminal investigation department were in vain. Three weeks later, 45-year-old Victoria Vygovskaya visited the military town. She was the mother of one of the soldiers and brought a parcel for him, which the guy received, but unfortunately the woman disappeared somewhere without a trace, causing immediate concern among relatives. Elena Ivanova, who came to visit her soldier husband, also suddenly disappeared. However, this time there was a clue in the case. Private Jevelyuk shed light on the mysterious circumstances. He said that he had seen Elena in the company of a man in military uniform, sturdy and tall. Jevela could not draw a clear portrait of the suspicious soldier due to his poor eyesight. However, it was clear that whoever this man was, he certainly played some role in the disappearance of the women. The epicenter of the search for the missing female visitors to the military town was Lake Bell, which previously had a more exotic name, Kaukiervi. They also searched the nearby forest. As the search continued, a new version of what might have happened to the women emerged, mystical and frightening. Some suggested that the unfortunate women were victims of evil spirits that dwelled near the pond. One day, while combing the area again, the operatives noticed a strange soldier walking around with a small bundle in his hands. They were even more surprised when they saw the contents of the bundle. Women's clothing items, underwear and clothes. Thinking that the case smelled suspicious, the special services were already preparing to bring the guy to justice. But he reacted emotionally. He started crying and confessed that dressing up in women's clothes was his favorite pastime. Believing his sincere words, the operatives let the young man go. As it would turn out later, he really had nothing to do with the disappearance of women. Quite soon, the search yielded results. While looking at the large stones scattered on the hillside, the district police officer from Vyborg could not take his eyes off them and all because of the phalanx of a finger sticking out in the middle of this careless pile of boulders. It was not an ordinary finger, well-groomed, manicured, and it belonged to Victoria Vygovskaya, the very mother of the soldier who had come to the military town and never returned home. From the body recovered from under the rubble, forensic experts concluded how the woman was killed. She had been hit many times on the head with a blunt object, presumably a stone. Not far from the location of the corpse, the underwear of the deceased, stained with blood, was found, indicating violent actions by the killer. The scattering of stones, which resembled a grave mound, suggested that the deprivation of life was of a ritual nature. Additionally, there was a theory of a criminal group, because dragging these giant boulders from place to place alone seemed a difficult task. At the site of Victoria's body, another curious detail was found a button from a soldier's uniform. A little later, there was information about two privates who tried to use the truck for some reason. They were stopped by a sentry. Investigators immediately took advantage of this and concluded that the guys probably wanted to transport the murdered body from the military unit's territory. Two suspects were immediately detained. They turned out to be innocent, but a new name surfaced in the investigation, 
Igor Chernat. The privates mentioned him during interrogation saying that their fellow soldier was a thief and had recently bragged to them about his new clothes and money. Chernat was called up on to explain himself that same day. He openly admitted to stealing the coveralls and a broken night vision device. The operatives suspected that this man was involved in the women's murders. There was something unsettling about him. Although the thefts were concerning, they were not his worst offense. The operatives released Chernat but scheduled an additional interview with the soldier the next day. This turned out to be a fatal mistake. At dawn, Igor Chernat escaped. He persuaded his fellow soldier to leave the military unit, but he refused. The news about this incident immediately reached the police officers. Patrols were sent to the train stations. Senior Lieutenant Zhukov almost caught the fugitive. He noticed Chernat but could not catch him because he was physically weaker. After this incident, Zhukov was demoted in rank. Fortunately, the special services eventually caught up with the criminal. Chernat had stopped to visit his girlfriend in the village of Gavrilovo. Chernat not only paid the girl a visit, but also presented her with a luxurious gift, gold earrings in the form of maple leaves. However, he did not buy them in a jewelry store, but took them from his victim, Elena Ivanova. The jewelry was identified by the parents of the girl who disappeared some time ago. The suspect was declared wanted on a large scale. Operatives were on duty near Chernat's house, but he did not show up. Then they found his comrade, Komarov, and told him to immediately contact the police if the fugitive appeared. It didn't take long for him to contact the police. Chernat really hoped that his friend would recognize his plight, but Komarov flatly refused to lend him a helping hand. It is not known how this tumultuous search would have ended if the killer had not surrendered to the police himself. It happened in the fall of 1986. Chernat turned to the officer on duty and said that he was the maniac who had been searched for all over the country for several months. The police officer initially did not believe him, thinking it was just a bad joke, but the man remained steadfast in his confession. What made Igor Chernat take the slippery path of a criminal? Those who knew him gave him only positive characterizations. Igor was intellectually developed, charming, and kind. His internal qualities were supported by external merits, tall height, stateliness, and attractiveness in facial features, with lively, dark eyes. Little is known about Chernas childhood. He was born in Odessa, attended high school, then entered vocational school after completing eight grades, worked, obtained a driver's license, and lived on Pionerskaya Street. When called up for service, he found a new position as an infantry fighting vehicle driver. During this time, Obvious behavioral deviations appeared. He engaged in physical altercations, drank alcohol, and acted without coordination with his superiors. Nevertheless, he was never financially unstable and could afford new additions to his wardrobe, which seemed rather odd under the circumstances. Some witnesses claimed that Chernat once described in detail his sexual encounters with a girl, a confession that seemed to stroke his ego. He was generally quick to engage with different women. Additionally, Chernat's co-workers repeatedly noticed traces of dirt on his clothes. These red flags raised concerns among his fellow soldiers, but went largely unheeded. The command did not closely monitor Chernat on the days when he was in the repair area working with combat vehicles. Coincidentally, on these days, women who came to the military unit to visit their husbands and sons disappeared. Chernat was observed near the checkpoint several times and expressed an unusually keen desire to escort those who arrived at the military camp to the soldiers. This desire seemed to stem from a mix of cruelty, lust, and the desire to gain power over defenseless victims. However, the main motive for the murders was recognized as self-interest. Chernat sold belongings belonging to the murdered woman on the market in Vyborg. During the investigative operation, Many facts about life in the military town where the maniac served were revealed. Desertion, theft, hazing, and the easy and unpunished sale of weapons thrived there. The regiment's commander, exploiting his position, coerced female visitors into intimate relations. Later, Igor Chernat admitted that he was responsible for not just three but 13 murders. In all cases, the victims also experienced abuse. It was revealed that the first murder was committed by him back in November 1985. Chernat shared some details of his crimes. Victoria Vygovska on the way to the military unit. He tripped her, pinched her hands, committed acts of violence, and then took a five kilogram stone and hit the woman on the head with all his might. After that, 
He continued to beat mercilessly and stopped only when he noticed that the victim's face was covered with blood and she was no longer moving. In a similar manner, he abused pregnant Elena Ivanova and then strangled her by putting a leather key strap around her neck. The unfortunate woman convulsed for about five minutes. When she stopped struggling for life, she was instantly buried under a pile of branches. The veracity of ten more episodes mentioned by Chernat had to be doubted, but the proven crimes became the main clue in sentencing the accused. Igor Chernat was doomed to death. The court decided to shoot him, despite some attempts of the maniac to feign signs of insanity. The murderer did not utter the last word, only obediently accepted his bitter fate. The execution took place on October 21st, 1987.